Mary McCord, and I'm here with the Veterans History Project at Las Fuentes. I'm going to be the interviewer. I'm Jacob Arb. I'll be filming today. My name is Edward Soman. I'm a Pearl Harbor, a Pearl Harbor survivor. I'm 96 years old. That's about it. Thank you. Now, some of these questions I already got on that thing, so it's repeating itself. But, uh, where was this veteran born? What? Where was this veteran born? Where was I born? Yes, sir. I was born in Webb City, Missouri. And did you have a big family? No, I had one brother and one sister. One sister survives, and she's 91 years old. Oh, was your brother in the service? Yes. He was on the carriers. Oh, and your mom and dad? Well, I had a stepfather. My father was killed in an industrial accident on a Valentine's Day of 1923. And your mom? My mother survived, and I don't know, I don't know what her date of death was. But well, you had a, a good-sized family. Well, we had a, there were three kids, and, the two, and my mother and her, and her, a new husband. My. Well, now, uh, did you go to high school? Yeah. And when were you uh, enlisted? I, as soon as I, gradu I graduated from high school in 1935, I enlisted in the Navy immediately. And they took me at the end of 1935. Mm -hmm. And uh, how old were you? Seventeen. And why did you pick the Navy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a. It was a handy place to go, I guess. Mm -hmm. That was the middle of, middle of the depression. Oh. Things were tough. I was working scrubbing cars for seven dollars a week. Anyway, it was just a good way to go. It was. And you get an education at the same time. Yeah. Where did you have your boot camp? Boot camp was in San Diego. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. And shall we talk a little bit about boot camp and what you did? If you want. Shall we talk a little bit about boot camp? Yeah. Okay, you tell me about it. Well, it was an interesting experience for a 17 or 18 year old kid, because I was 18 by that time. And uh, um, we learned a lot of things that the Navy taught. It was different than what ordinary people would think of. Oh. And uh, I learned it. Well, I just learned it. And when, when did you get uh, into the radio school? I didn't <clears throat> get to school. I was a ham at home. Oh. And. Um, I had a friend in the neighborhood, Bud Nitz, and Bud and I used to use, used to practice code against each other. Mm. And so when I went in the Navy, all I did was just tell them uh, I already knew the code and I could copy it. And I didn't, I never went to school. Oh my goodness. 
So you were already trained. I was already trained. My, isn't that nice. Well, that was a fun thing you did with your friend. Yeah. That was fun. You could talk about everybody and they wouldn't even know what you're saying. That's right. <laughs> well, boot camp was over. And then, so your specialized training, what was that? Well, after boot camp, I went to the, I was directed to report to the, the chief of, see, how, how we just say it. Anyway, it was the commanding officer of the net of all the carriers, and uh, his office was in, in North Island, in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Well, I did this, I did that, but I ended up being a messy boy, <laughs> and I didn't get to, didn't get any radio experience at all, so I complained, and by golly, they listened to me and sent me to the squadrons. So I went to Fighting Squadron 3. And about six months after I got out of boot camp, and I, I stayed in Fighting Squadron 3 until my, room, my cruise was up, and I went, went back home again. What, what ship were you on? The Saratoga. <clears throat> That's a good old ship. And, um, I was on the Saratoga. And, um, well, that's about all I can say. Well, when, where were you when Pearl Harbor occurred? Well, Pearl Harbor occurred, uh, of course, two years after, after that. But um, I was on the weather deck of the New Orleans, and um, I had been recalled. I got paid off of the Navy. After four years, I got paid off, and I went back home and went to work. And uh, I long came to the Navy in 1940. I can't remember the day. Anyway, the Navy came and decided I should be back in the service. So they recalled me to active duty and sent me to the USS New Orleans. Mm. Now was the New Orleans or was it a destroyer? It was a heavy it was a no, it was a New Orleans was a heavy cruiser. Oh heavy cruiser. So where where was your bay? Pardon? Where did you go? Where did they take you on the All over the Pacific Ocean. Well let's talk about some of the places. What what did you think of what happened to Pearl Harbor? Well I was a little bit out of out of contact with things because I didn't know what was happening to to us. Except I was standing on the weather deck in the chow line that morning going to breakfast and I saw the first Japanese bomber come come down from Mary's Point. And um, they did they basically left us alone. We were in the shipyard and uh, pretty well we were left alone. Hmm. But we did get some shrapnel, and um, uh, that was about it. But um, well, you were lucky. After that, we were we were in the shipyard for repair, and um, so after that, after that, when we got 
halfway ready for service, we were sent to the south to the South Atlantic to deliver some troops to um, to a couple of hours down there. And where was it? We were with it. Yeah. And and where were you delivering the troops? Pardon? Where did you have to take the troops? The troops went to, oh, what's the name of the two islands? Johnson Island and, uh, I can't think of the name of the other one. Oh, well. Anyway. And then you said you th took a tour of the world, really, by ship. Well, most of it was in the Atlantic. I was in the Pacific. In the Pacific? Yeah. So you got to see a lot of destruction. Well, we caused a lot of destruction. Good. We, uh, the ship in its entire life had 17 battle stars, but I only I only was there for, for I think 12 or 13 of them. But I have 10. I I wear 10 battle stars, and uh, when the war first broke out, we we were out of the shipyard again. We took a convoy to Brisbane, to Brisbane, Australia. Oh. And uh, and when we lost, when we left Brisbane, we took another convoy out of Brisbane, north, and we were going to dump it on one of the islands. And the Japanese stopped us. I had I started the Battle of Coral Sea. Oh. And um, <coughs> we got out, got out of that one all right. But immediately we headed back to Pearl Harbor to resupply, refuel and that sort of thing. And then we were sent on another convoy, another another group of ships to uh, oh, one of the biggest battles of the war. It was the biggest what? One of the biggest battles of the war. Oh, what was that one? Well, that's what I'm trying to think. Oh, of. okay. My memory doesn't last me that long. The island north of north of Pearl Harbor. North Guadalcanal. No. Um. Anyway. Jacob, you're smart. I can't. I can't tell you the name of it. Hmm. How did that battle go? We won it. Of course. We, were, we sank four of their batteries, four of their aircraft carriers, uh, without without them knowing what we were doing. And we were on we were on site before they were. We got the word that they were coming in, and, and so we chased them down. And. Uh, We were on site for the to have the bat to have their aircraft carriers picked off. Mm. And so they lost four carriers. Wow. That in itself changed the outcome of the war. Because the, the Japanese Navy was gone by that time. Oh. 
and, and although we had many more battles, but we we had a lot of a lot of them were from ship to shore and that sort of thing, and then. Finally, we got in the Guadalcanal, and we were in the Guadalcanal area for for a whole summer, mid, almost three months, oh. supporting the troops there because the Marines on, on on the island were struggling to keep to keep their their control. And then after that, I don't know. I was pretty well. I was transferred from the ship, and uh, went back to Pennsylvania to put the Wisconsin commission. So uh, I don't really know how long they, they stayed in, in Guadalcanal. Well, you were just a young fellow still, too. Oh, I was probably, I was in my 20s yet. Yeah. Yep. And what were you doing in New York? I was, I was, a, I was putting a shipping commission, the USS Wisconsin. And uh, it was not in New York, it was in Pennsylvania. Oh. And, um, So um, anyway, I went back to I went back to Philadelphia and started working on this ship. And uh, pretty soon, I was told to, that, I, that my duty was up, and I was going back going back to for for disposition. And so. Um, one afternoon, the commanding officer came to me and told me that uh, we've got we've got another man, another chief. I was a chief by that time. Another chief assigned, and you're going to have to go somewhere else. Mm. So I went home, told my wife, because I was married by that time. I told my wife we were going back to to San Francisco, mm. and so we got on a train and went back to San Francisco. And um, once there, I was sent back to Pearl Harbor. So I went back to Pearl Harbor, and um, when I got into the uh, end of the harbor and reported aboard. Some commander who was who was doing the assigning of, of, of men to post got a, got a hold of me and said, "Well, I think you've had enough." And so he said, "I've got a job for you right here on the island." Oh, so I went. Uh, so I went to work in a, a radio and sonar unit uh, there on, on Pearl Harbor. And um, I stayed there until the end of the war. And at the end of the war, I went back to the United States and became a civilian. Well, you finally got to do your radio work too. Yeah. Yeah, we were. Um, we were putting radios on all kinds of boats and so forth. So that was what we were doing. Um, do you ever keep in touch with the remainder of guys from Pearl Harbor? No, I don't. I keep in touch with this one man that's here in Prescott. Uh-huh. And uh, 
I generally have lunch with him every couple of weeks. Or oh. Weeks. But um, there were two or three. There was uh, quite a few of them for a while. Mm -hmm. But they all died off. Yeah. I miss Murphy. I knew Murphy pretty well. Oh. Well, he was one that died. Yeah. And, and you went back to after the after your job in the in the data and in the uh, tele, teletype. Did you do teletype? We did teletype. We did teletype. Radio. That sort of thing. And after that was over with, then you went home to where? Well, when, when the war was over, I went back to Bonifer, Utah. My wife had bought my wife had bought a home in Bountiful. and so I I met her in San Francisco, and uh, we traveled back to Bountiful and settled down. Bountiful? Bountiful. Bountiful. Huh. I don't, I don't know where that is. It's, in, it's about 15 miles north of Salt Lake City. Okay. Pretty country. Pretty country. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so um, we lived there. And well, with all your experience in and out of the Navy, and being on different carriers, what life's lessons did you learn? I don't know. That have stayed with you all this time? I don't really know what lesson I learned. Discipline, maybe? Maybe discipline. You had to be on time. Well, it was the Navy. And I still I still enjoy the Navy. If I had if I had the, the thing to do over, I'd be back in the Navy. <laughs> but uh, Anyway, that's, that's my life. That's a wonderful life. It was a very fulfilled life. A fulfilled life. Very, very. And the Navy, you chose the right place. Right. And I bet you were a cute sailor. <laughs> I don't know about being cute. <laughs> well, I like the hats. Uh, if you were to talk to any of the kids today, that didn't know what to do. I'd tell them to join the Navy. Good. Well, I want to thank you so much. You're quite welcome. This was a, a wonderful story, plus a lot of people will benefit. And I have something for you. Where did he go? This is a story, and you can show your friends or whatever. This is the Veterans History Project. Oh. And it tells all about where you've been and whatever. And we have our own purple heart. And I'm going to pin it on you because you earned it. Well, thank you. I hope I don't, I hope I don't, hope you don't. stab you. And thank you so much. You're quite welcome. It was very well, nice. Thank you for the memo.
Thank you.